Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman, and I'm talking to you today on behalf of AskAdapt and AdaptYourLife.com. The theme of the questions today are, do calories matter? Yes, they do, if you're trying to lose weight, and or just for general health purposes. And what should your macros be? And I think the theme will be, I don't know what your macros need to be. The end result of what you eat depends on what you're trying to achieve, whether it's weight loss, metabolic health, or some ketone level for a therapeutic benefit. I'd like to go through a few of these questions, uh, and those are the general topics for today, though. So from R.D. Dykeman, Dave Dykeman at Type 1 Grit, if I drink a cup of heavy cream, what happens to the calories? Are they not metabolized? Will it impede weight loss? Will eating the meals of fat and oil right my hormonal balance and make me burn fat? Well, that's a common question. And if you're trying to lose weight, it's a different situation than if you're at your weight goal or at a, at a maintenance level. Uh, for example, if you're a type 1 gritter and you're using a high-fat, low-carb diet to achieve better diabetes control, that's going to be a little different than if you're trying to lose weight using LCHF. So if your uh, type 1 gooder is using, uh, has type 1 diabetes and is using low carb to keep the blood glucose or blood sugar control more normal. So this is a, a specialized area where I have to admit that we don't have a whole lot of science to, to uh, guide us. But if you're trying to lose weight, the cream or the oils that you eat or drink matter in terms of the calories. So if you're still trying to lose weight and you're drinking the oils and cream without regard to how much you're having, and you're having more energy in, calories consumed than you're burning, then you may not lose weight. You might even gain weight. And uh, I know we talk about not measuring calories and not worrying about them, and that is correct. However, calories do matter. And then people ask me, well, I thought you said calories don't matter. No, that's never been said, and I've never said that. It, people have said that out there, and it's a, uh, as the science has developed, calories matter, but they're not calculated in the same way on every kind of diet. So it's more complicated than looking at the calories on the product, the calories on the label, for example, or, or wherever you're getting information about it. Because how the calories are handled internally inside your body is very different depending on what type of calorie you're eating or drinking. So I guess, uh, RD, I, I would say that you know what you uh, eat in terms and drink in terms of calories matter if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to now um, control blood sugar. So this is your, your next question from Type 1 Grit. Uh, because protein can be turned to sugar or because eating protein makes the liver still make glucose, um, what's the best way to eat now that you're low-carb, high-fat, and you're just trying to do this for glucose control? I have to say I, I really don't know. Um, the, it turns out I think that this will be an individualized answer based on the person's own response. Um, if you go way back 100 years ago, the protein that people ate could be turned into urine glucose, urine sugar. So I have to think that the protein that people eat, whether it's turning directly into glucose or making the liver make glucose, to me it doesn't matter. The end result is uh, that eating or having protein, drinking it even, can raise the blood glucose. And if you're trying to moderate that, then you want to have an adequate protein, not high protein. Um, having oils shouldn't, or butter or, or cream or just fat shouldn't raise the blood sugar much. So fortunately, now you can measure your own biologic system using the glucometers and, and these kinds of instruments. And I think the amount of protein that someone should get is more based on the, where there's someone needs to grow, the, the grams per kilogram kind of 
measurement. And honestly, I don't know the the right number, uh, especially with kids who are growing. Um, I have to think that um, given free access to food, a child will generally know how much they need to eat. Sometimes it's amazing how much they eat, and uh, but the science really is not there to guide us to know exactly how much uh, protein or fat to eat when you're trying to moderate the blood glucose. Um, the next question, again, is one of these controversial, how, how can, let's see, Marie Ivy asks, how can the different keto camps come up with such different answers if the answers are based on the same science? And that's a great question. I, I think the science is in its uh, toddlerhood, if you will, um, so that uh, the other, so we need more science to draw hard conclusions. The other thing is that um, we often quibble about mechanisms when the end result is very similar. So uh, much like arguing about uh, uh, the mechanism uh, when there are several different stages where it could be uh, acting. Um, so I, often I'll say that we're in heated agreement uh, and then we're just um, not on the same sheet of music uh, having to do with the small things that really aren't so important, although some people might tell you that they're so important. Um, we've heard that fat should come from your own body stores as opposed to coming from additional fat. Is this true and how much fat should you have? Uh, um, other people ask, what should my macros be? And I, again, I, I don't know. And in fact, in my clinical setting, I don't ask people to calculate their own macros if they're trying to lose weight because uh, the calories you consume matter, although they don't count exactly outside the body as inside the body. The more you eat, the less you're going to be using your own body fat if you're trying to lose weight. Um, so uh, that's where I don't really know the right answer about the right macro percent. Even uh, Pamela Saunders asks, on a vegan diet eating LCHF, what should my macros be? I, I don't know. Um, and you'll have to figure that out depending on whether you're trying to lose weight, whether you're trying to fix your metabolism. Another question came up about um, what should we follow, the triglycerides, the LDLs, that sort of thing. A lot of people come to me or do LCHF to fix the high triglyceride, the, the low HDL, um, the, the high small LDL, and I think the current consensus view is that you want your triglycerides and your small LDLs to be as low as possible and you want your good cholesterol, the HDLs, to be as high as possible. Um, enter in now though the infl inflammation and inflammatory markers and I think those are just as important, maybe even more important uh, as more science comes out. Uh, that's the CRP measurements, things like that. Uh, Tony from Australia asked, um, he's had low energy with a high fat consumption on a low carb program for three years, what should I do? Well, energy level is an interesting thing and a, a lot of people early on think it has to do with having more sugar because we've all been taught that and I don't find that to be true. Energy levels, when you're adapted to fat burning, have to do more with the amount of salt you're having or the blood pressure. So. If uh, someone is able to, uh, or they come to me in the clinic, um, I'll have the blood pressure measured. If the blood pressure is on the low side, then I'll have them increase the salt and water that they consume. Um, what you can do at home is to try adding some salt, and you can add about 800 milligrams of salt in a cube of bouillon or a teaspoon of bouillon which, or, or uh, broth. Uh, just soup broth or bone broth and see if that doesn't help the energy levels. This is Dr. Eric Westman on behalf of Ask Adapt and Adapt Your Life, adaptyourlife.com. Hope this was helpful.